here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing this all-new 2022 Jeep Compass Trailhawk. And a huge thank you to Dayton Andrews, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, and Fiat in Clearwater, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have a kind staff and a really impressive dealership. I'll leave links to their inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely suggest checking these guys out. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Compass has been a part of Jeep's lineup since 2006. That's when the first generation was released. The second generation was released in 2018. And here for 2022, we are going to receive a couple updates, such as an all new interior. We're going to get a 10.1 inch available touchscreen, smaller LED headlights uh, that kind of give this front end a little bit more of an aggressive design. Uh, we're going to get a new suspension for this Trailhawk trim. Uh, but the powertrain is going to stay overall the same. We're still going to have the 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine made it to a nine speed automatic transmission, uh, which is an upgrade compared to most of the segment, which uses CVTs. But here we have the Jeep Compass Trailhawk 4x4. The base price is going to be sitting around $32,400. Um, after a couple options, including the Trailhawk Convenience Group and the Trailer Tow Package, we're going to be sitting at an MSRP uh, just a tick over $35,000. So still a great value considering this is one of the more off-road capable compact SUVs in the segment uh, so for $35,000 let's see what we get so starting up front as you mentioned we are gonna get updated LED headlamps uh, they're gonna have black headlight housing you're gonna see full LEDs with a turn signal on the outside it would be nice if this top portion of the headlight was a daytime running strip but still not a big deal I don't know if you can notice but there is a Jeep little engraved area on the headlight housing but continuing down we're also gonna get uh, fog lights they're gonna be a halogen beam everything's gonna be flat black plastic for this front grille area uh, but still a solid amount of airflow over here as you know so we are going to get parking sensors on this trailhawk trim right here we're going to house our advanced safety features no airflow up top but we're still going to get uh, the signature jeep seven piece oval design up top with the jeep logo right up top continuing down we're going to notice our red tow hooks that can help you get out of some sticky situations off-road and some additional airflow down here uh, for the radiator, which may be a kind of a questionable location for airflow considering this is an off-road capable SUV, uh, but not a big deal. Most drivers are probably gonna keep this thing on the road for the most part, but we'll take a step back. You can check out the front styling one more time. I am digging the, the hood where you have the Trailhawk red emblem contrasted with the black in the middle. That definitely makes this front end look much more aggressive, but taking a step over here, we can check out this wheel and tire setup. And that's also where this vehicle is going to shine. Here we have our 17 inch silver and gunmetal gray contrasted Y spoke rims. Uh, they're going to be wrapped in 215 65 R17 Falcon Wild Peak HT tires. So pretty aggressive tire for both on and off road use. Uh, the 65 series sidewall is definitely going to help when it comes to ride quality. The wheel well is going to be surrounded in plastic cladding. Same with the front end. It's going to continue to the rockers and the rear as well. Everything's going to be surrounded in plastic cladding to help protect this vehicle from rock chips because this is going to be an off road capable SUV. As you see, you have your Trail Raider 4x4 badge. It's going to be outlined in red. I like how the Compass uh, nameplate's also outlined in red, definitely making it pop more. Um, I also take this black and white contrast for this entire roof. It's going to be completely blacked out. The window trim all blacked out, blacked out B-pillar, dark tints for the rear. Same with the hatch. Definitely dig the styling. Everything's going to be blacked out, even the bottom part of the window trim. As far as the mirrors, also going to have a black contrast to the white paint. The glass fills up the frame very well. You have blind spot monitoring, heated mirrors, and it does say Jeep right up top as well. Also, you got an LED turn signal on the mirror. We have smart access for the driver and a front passenger. As far as this window sticker, since the glass is pretty darkly tinted, you're not going to see it very well. You'll see my reflection pretty well. Uh, but here we have the 2022 Compass Trailhawk 4x4. Base price is going to be sitting right at $32,400, uh, $420. Uh, we're going to have the 4x4 bright white clear coat exterior paint, beautiful paint, especially contrasting with this black roof. Uh, we have the black ruby red interior color. We're going to have an updated interior. We'll check it out in one second. Premium cloth slash leather trim bucket seats. Really comfortable with the cloth inlays, but the outside is going to be leather again. We'll check all that out in one second. 2.4 liter four cylinder that has not been changed. Nine speed auto transmission. Uh, as far as standard equipment, you can pause, take a look at all of that. This is going to be coming on your base $32,000 Trailhawk 4x4. So you're going to be loaded with standard features. The 10.1 inch display comes standard on the Trailhawk 4x4. As far as options, you can check it out. We're going to have the Convenience group is going to run you about $1,300. That's going to give you the heated front seats, remote start, heated steering wheel, leather wrap steering wheel, eight-way power adjustable driver's seat, two-way lumbar adjustable driver's seat. The second row is going to have charging for both USB-A and USB-C, 115-volt auxiliary power outlet as well, class three trailer hitch receiver. That's going to be coming on your $600 trailer group. Uh, you're also going to get a four-pin wiring harness, and this vehicle comes in all-season floor mat delete. So it's going to subtract about $170. 
Um, after a $1,600 destination charge, expected total vehicle price to be sitting right under 36,000 bucks. So still a pretty good value. Uh, you're gonna get about 25 combined MPGs, 22 city, 30 highway. So not very bad on gas, but continuing along, I also like how the seat pillar is gonna be blacked out. Continuing in the back, we got our LED tail lights, a little bit of chrome outside. You have the turn signal and the reverse light out here. I kind of dig this design over here for this area again, like how the light continues to the trunk lid. This whole trim over here, all blacked out. Pretty aggressive design for this Trailhawk trim. You got the 4x4 badge. Shout out Dayton Andrews, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, and Fiat. Got the Trailhawk badge right here. And again, I like that red and black contrast that you get for the Trailhawk. Uh, but continuing back here, we do get parking sensors for the rear. Uh, we get one uh, tow hook back here. That's kind of unexpected. You would expect to have two on both sides of this trailer hitch. But again, since we have the trailer hitch group, here we have it. Um, I'll put a little text box right here, show what this vehicle is rated to tow. You can see the exhaust tip right down over there. Uh, but we'll take one more step back. You can take a look at the rear styling on this SUV. And let's start it up and hear how this 2.4 liter four cylinder sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 2.4 liter four cylinder sold by Jeep for the Compass. Uh, we are gonna get a push to open gas tank with easy fill. 87 octane fuel is accepted with this 2.4 liter engine as well. But as far as this motor, let's step over here and check it out as soon as we can figure out this latch. And pretty easy latch, no um, struts, unfortunately. Kind of expected, kind of consistent with the rest of the segment, but we'll set up the prop rod right over here. And here you have it, you got your 2.4 liter multi-air four cylinder engine. As far as power numbers, you can expect around 180 horsepower, 175 pound feet of torque, enough to get this SUV to 60 between eight and a half and nine seconds. So no, absolutely not the fastest, but more than enough to get this vehicle out of the hole, especially with this nine speed auto transmission. Um, pretty smooth shifting, not the quickest shifts, but more than quick enough. And the nine speeds are gonna help you get some pretty good fuel economy on the highway. But we'll shut this thing up as soon as we can figure out this prop rod. Hopefully I don't drop the hood on my head. But, all right, right here. And we'll take a step back. You can take a look at the front styling one more time. And let's go ahead over here and check out the interior because this is where this vehicle is most updated and it's where it's gonna really shine. So up top, you're gonna notice you're gonna have soft touch materials for the upper part of the door panel. You're gonna have a little bit of piano black. You already have some fingerprints. Those are not mine. Probably the previous person that was in this vehicle. Uh, aluminum door handle. You have hard plastic surrounding this little trim over here, but that's about it. Everything else is gonna be soft touch for the upper part of the door panel. Very soft leather trim with some red contrast stitching. Power one touch for the front. You got four way adjustable mirrors as well. You can lock the rear windows too. Uh, back here, you have a pretty large cup holder. You can probably fit a big gulp in there. Uh, you're probably not gonna fit a foot long, but you can fit like a six inch sub inside because as you see, it does cave in pretty deeply for this door panel. Outside of the window controls, it's just gonna be some hard plastic right here. You have one out of your six speakers. It would be nice to get a Trailhawk nameplate down here, uh, but as far as the seats, you got your Trailhawk badge, red stitching right here. Soft headrest, pretty solid bolstering extensions. Not gonna be the most supportive, but it's very comfortable seats, especially with these cloth inlays for your butt and your back. Uh, but let's really check it out, take a step inside this 2022 Compass Trailhawk and uh, really check it out. And let's turn down this air by one so you guys can hear a little bit better. But first thing we notice is gonna be the steering wheel, super thick steering wheel. You can see the red contrast stitching, one of the thicker steering wheels in the business. Very nice 10 and two bolstering notch, very good 10 and two position. On the wheel, however, the nine and three, not very good. Uh, the thumb slot doesn't really cave in very well and the steering wheel doesn't cave in at all for your fingers. So in my opinion, the nine and three is not a very comfortable position to hold on this wheel, uh, but it's still very thick. If you're not a nine and three driver, I personally wouldn't complain. If you wanna have your elbow on the armrest and just drive your fingers like this, this is a very comfortable steering wheel. As far as the controls, well, before the controls, as far as the horn, it's gonna be rubberized as far as the horn itself. Pretty aggressive horn. I actually wasn't expecting it to be that aggressive. People will definitely get out of your way. Right here, you can adjust this seven inch uh, digital display in the center. Uh, you got your cruise control settings right here. You have lane departure warning. Uh, you got lane keep assist and the radar cruise function right beneath it. But as far as adjusting the seven inch display up front, you of course use these buttons right next to your call, hang up and answer settings. You can press these buttons. You can adjust between vehicle information. You can see your TPMS, uh, tire pressure, coolant temp, trans temp, oil temp, battery voltage, and right back to where we started. As far as driver assist, right now it's not currently turned on, but you would see your adaptive cruise control and active lane management. Beneath that, you can see your fuel economy. You can see your current and average MPGs, trip information, 
uh, start stop for cooling calving, audio messages, screen setup, settings, and right back to where we started. My personal favorite, just look at the digital speedo, so we're gonna stay right here. Also on the digital display, you can see your compass run, so it tells you that the engine is currently running. You see your coolant temperature, you see the um, gas level right next to it. As far as the um, speedometer or tachometer, it's gonna go to about 6,300 RPM, so not the highest revving four cylinder motor. Uh, we're gonna have a 160 mile an hour speedometer as well. Uh, but anyway, continuing over here, we're gonna have auto headlights, of course, you can adjust them right here. Um, as far as the turn signal stocks, pretty solid click. They're a little bit flimsy going back and forth for the high beam, but the turn signal themselves, very satisfying click. No rain sensing wipers, of course, not really expected, uh, but you can adjust the speed of the wipers when, oh, that's actually the rear wipers. You can adjust the speed of the wipers right over here. Uh, but anyway, as far as the dashboard, everything's gonna be this really nice stitched material. That's gonna be completely updated for 2022. Uh, even over here, we have some red contrast stitching, not real leather, uh, but it's gonna be like this faux perforated material, very high quality look. Uh, the air vent's gonna have this gloss black finish to it too. You don't see that very often, uh, but here's where your money's being spent. You got the 10.1 inch display, all new. I know a lot of you guys aren't the biggest fan of the iPad style, but as you can see, there really wouldn't be anywhere else to put the 10.1 inch display. Very good resolution, very quick to respond. You can see your music information. You can see the air vent information right here if you wouldn't want to adjust it right beneath down over there. Uh, but you can adjust all the settings. You have heated seats, of course, as far as this phone area. We don't have one connected, but of course, if you connected a phone, you can see all your messages and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto information over there. Uh, but as far as these vehicle settings, you guys can see what you can adjust as far as the My Profile. I'm not gonna adjust anything here. Whatever, whoever owns this vehicle can adjust it to their likings, but you can see everything that will be offered. As far as the display settings, you can see manual, auto, set theme, units, touchscreen, beep. So this vehicle currently has a touchscreen beep, so when you press the buttons, you hear a little beep, uh, but you can turn that off if you don't want to hear it. Um, it doesn't vibrate when you touch it, so I personally would recommend keeping it on. As far as safety and driving assistance, you can turn off all your advanced safety features, active lane management, park sense, um, park sense volume, blind spot alert, and all that. So. For daylight savings, you can adjust the time and hours. You see your phone, Bluetooth, camera. So let's check this out. So you can adjust the park view backup camera delay, park view camera active guidance line. So when I was backing this SUV up, the guidance lines were not on. That was gonna be a complaint. So we'll just have to turn it on right over here. Okay, cool. So now they're on. When we put the car into reverse, let's check it out. So, okay, now we have guidance lines. They're gonna have trajectory too. Very good backup camera. So I was gonna be super surprised if the guidance lines and trajectory were not gonna be offered. Uh, you can see that red tow hook sticking out underneath. You can press this plus button and now you have a little trailer hitch camera. So if you're backing this thing up into a receiver, you can clearly see if your hitch is lined up to it. But we'll get out of here, put the car right back in the park and it goes immediately back into the screen we were just in. Unlike the BMW cars where uh, you put the car back in the park and you have to manually put the car back into its home screen or else you're just gonna be staring at your backup camera. Uh, but that's about it over here. You can check out your apps too. Um, this vehicle is not gonna have any currently updated, but this is where they would be. Up top, you can see your heated steering wheel, you can see your heated seats information, air conditioning settings, Wi-Fi hotspot, exit temperature, time, and the song that's currently playing as well. Pretty good information to see, uh, but that's about it for this display. We'll go right back to the home screen uh, where you would see the song is playing. You could see uh, the phone settings and the air conditioning settings all in one screen, pretty convenient. Beneath that, that stitch perforated trim is gonna continue all around your start stop button if you could pick it up right over here. And the start stop button's gonna have this really nice aluminum feeling material outside of it. And speaking of aluminum feel, this whole trim down here, very nice little brush aluminum finish, uh, some piano black underneath it, but that red contrast stitch continues throughout this entire uh, dashboard. That air vent's gonna integrate really flushly with this gloss black little stick underneath the dashboard. Uh, very nice look. I'm definitely digging the look of this interior. You have dual zone automatic climate control, of course, with heated seats, the volume dial, very, very satisfying click, uh, very good weight resistance. Same for the tooling, they feel about the same. Adjusting the air vents, also very satisfying uh, resistance. Down here, uh, no wireless charging pad, it is available. You have uh, USB-C and USB ports down here. Very good storage down here though. This area does not close, however. I know a lot of vehicles have a little, little closing door for this little storage pocket, but this SUV is not gonna have one. As far as the gear selector, here it's gonna be adjusting the eight-speed automatic transmission. You're gonna have manual shift modes here as well. And it's gonna be in the proper directions. To upshift, you gotta pull back. To downshift, you push forward. So definitely thumbs up to Jeep for adding that. I get your electronic parking brake. For the four x four system, you're gonna have rock, sand, mud, snow, and auto mode. We're gonna leave this car in auto mode because we're not gonna be taking it off-road, but it's still nice to have those adjustments. Nevertheless, we also get four wheel drive low, hill descent control, and you can lock the four wheel drive so it's permanently set in four wheel drive. 
Back here, we got your um, octagonal cup holders. Pretty interesting shape. You have a cutout right here. Pretty good spot for your phone. Uh, but pretty nice cup holders. They'll fit just about any size cups up to about like 12 to 16 ounces. Uh, but anyway, as far as this center console, this is going to be my first minus. Not because of the comfort. The comfort is really there. One of the softer padded armrests in the business. Digging the red contrast stitch. But check this out. Really, not that much space, especially considering the amount of space you get in the Equinox or the CRV. Um, you could probably fit one two liter soda in there, but that's about it. If you're looking for the more spacious center console, I'll definitely send you towards either the CRV or Equinox. But as far as this uh, glove box, you just pull this latch. It's going to be damped, as you see, very large, super deep. You can easily fit two pairs of shoes in there. You could probably fit between 25 and 30 license plates in here because really impressive depth. Moving up top, as far as the rear view mirror, it's not going to be frameless, but it's going to be auto dimming. It's a little bit dated. It kind of reminds me of my grandparents' 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee. You have your SOS right here. Lighting controls, you can turn them on with these buttons. No moonroof, unfortunately. It would be nice to get one, uh, but still a super impressive interior on this updated 2022 Jeep Compass. That's about it for the front seat, guys. Let's check out the back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the quality of the materials. All right, guys, stepping inside the back seat of the 2022 Compass. Up top, the material's gonna be hard plastic, kind of expected. Some That piano black trim with the aluminum grab handle does continue, however. Uh, but down here, everything's gonna be still soft, carried over from the front, red contrast stitching, st solid storage, no power one touch, but you do get power one touch in the front, of course. Uh, pretty solid storage, you can fit a 16 ounce right here. Um, this little area does not cave into the door panel, however, so you're probably just gonna have to stick to a couple candy bars or something. But here you have another one of your six speakers. As far as the rear seats, that uh, cloth inlay does continue, Not any, no bolstering at all. These are gonna be basically flat bench seats, uh, but the bottom portion does have a little bit of a stick up area, so it's gonna keep you a little bit supported. But I'm six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings. Let's see how much legroom is offered back here. So. Pretty competitive to the segment. I have about uh, three, four inches of legroom. Um, a little bit less than what we had in the CRV and Equinox, but it's just about the same. As far as foot space, I have just about the same. Plenty of room for my feet. Uh, we do get air vents back here. That is nice. Uh, you got USB-C and USB port. Uh, the Equinox and the CRV only offer USBs. Down here, you have an AC adapter too, which is nice. You can charge up all your stuff right next to a 12 volt down here as well. Uh, we're gonna have map pockets behind both driver and a front passenger. Also, you wouldn't get that in the CRV or the Equinox. As far as this little center cubby, we are gonna get a string too, but again, this string does look like it might rip in the long term. Uh, but the console itself, very soft. You can have a cutout, you can get spots to fit your phone. Uh, rubberized cup holders should be big enough to fit a 12 ounce with no problem at all. But that's about it for this back seat area. Pretty impressive. We're also gonna have lights right here next to your grab handle. You don't see that very often, uh, but that's about it. Let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this car out. For a drive. All right, guys, taking a step inside the trunk, you simply pull this latch. Uh, we're not gonna get a power opening tailgate, unfortunately, but it's still gonna be hydraulically assisted. As far as the space, pretty competitive with the segment. I personally think that both the CRV and the uh, Equinox that we recently reviewed had more cargo space. These wheel wells do carry over to the back pretty heavily. We're not gonna have the most space in between, but you should be able to fit a golf bag with no issues. You fold these two rear seats down, which fall 60, 40 split. I'd say you'd be able to fit a 55 to 60 inch TV back here with basically no issues whatsoever. But again, this trunk area, not very deep. I could touch the back seats with no issues at all. We have a little bit of additional storage down here around your spare tire. But again, I wouldn't expect you to fit a whole lot of extra stuff. But again, we don't have a power tailgate, so we gotta close this trunk ourselves. Not very tough. We'll take one more step back and let's take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, now that we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 Jeep Compass Trailhawk. Let's take it out for a drive. And first thing I noticed is the steering wheel, very thick steering wheel and the throttle response, since this isn't a turbocharged 1.5 liter um, engine that we had in both the Equinox and the um, CRV, I do feel like it has a little bit stronger throttle response. But okay, taking a step out onto this multiple lane road, ooh, pretty good response. Yeah, we go to about 4,000 RPM with a third throttle, so pretty aggressive tuning. But we'll take a step right here, throw it in a little bit faster than we should. Uh, pretty light steering, half throttle, decent torque, but again, very aggressive tuning. It takes you to about like 5,300 RPM uh, with very, very light throttle. So uh, to make up for the light amount of power, they're gonna make the tuning and throttle response a lot more aggressive. Yeah, very aggressive up the line. We're barely on the gas and we go to about 3,000 RPM. Uh, we're not in any type of sport mode or anything, but we get to 
highway speeds very quickly. And with these 65 series sidewall tires, uh, even at speed, you don't really feel the bumps at all. Very, very smooth ride. It's just that you are starting to hear a little tiny bit more road noise compared to what we had in Equinox. But we have a little bit of open road. We can try to do a light little highway pull, um, starting at about 35 miles an hour on the gas. Ooh. Wow, really slow shift. But the, it pulls strong, wow. Once you cross like 4,500 RPM, this thing can pull. But um, I don't know if you picked it up on camera, but that shift, it was like a manual shift how slow it was. Um, it was like, it was a good like half second to get between second and third gear. Uh, but uh, still very strong pull from this motor. It does feel a little bit underrated. I'll try to do an off the line acceleration if we get the opportunity to, uh, to really see how this vehicle can accelerate. All right, guys, we got an open road right here. We'll try this thing out off the line on the gas. Ooh, good response. <laughs> yeah, those shifts are um, laughably slow, but we get to speed to highway speeds pretty quickly. Um, I, I can see the zero to 60 time being in the mid eight second range. Um, I don't quite think it'll be over nine seconds. It does seem to pull pretty strong. It's just this transmission, I feel like it could shift a little bit quicker uh, than it does, but it's still very smooth getting up to speed. It's a very smooth process. Um, I'm sure most of you guys aren't really gonna be hammering on the gas. There's no paddle shifters here anyway. If you wanna use the manual shift controls, you can use these controls right over here. So we're in second gear. Ooh, not a lot of torque. And we hit the rev limiter because the shifts are so slow. Um, I was not even close to the red line, but since the shifts are so slow, it took like half a second and it bumped me to the red line. But as far as the response, it does take like a good half a second to respond. So I'll probably just leave it in drive for regular everyday driving, but it's still nice that they do offer you manual shift modes, especially for an off-road capable SUV. The visibility in this SUV is also fantastic. I'm gonna throw in the POV camera so you guys can get a first-hand look driving this SUV and I'll catch back with you in one sec. All right, guys, stepping out here in the 2022 Jeep Compass. As you see, barely on the gas, we go to about 2,300 RPM. We do get the speed pretty quickly, but once you lean into the gas about like a quarter, maybe a third of the way, you're gonna be shooting to about 4,000 RPM in no time. But, all right, guys, taking a step out right over here, we'll lean on the gas. Woo! As you see, those shifts are laughably slow, but very smooth. You get to speed pretty quickly, no complaints overall we will slow down a little bit as the speed limit went down let this guy next to us pass um, and cruising on this road about 40 miles an hour you hear a tiny little bit of road noise but it's really nothing that's not manageable all right guys stepping out onto this multiple lane highway we'll try another acceleration run right here Ooh, a little slow when it comes to torque we get the speed no issues whatsoever. I could definitely see the zero to 60 time being under nine seconds. And uh, once the revs calm down, to maintain speed, you really don't have to use that much gas pedal. Pretty impressive. And as you hear, going about 45 on the highway, very limited wind noise, just about zero road noise. The steering too in this SUV is very on center. It's pretty light on center, uh, but it's still pretty direct. As you see, we are changing directions with very little steering input. But once you lean into like about like an inch, you start to really feel a little bit more weight through the steering. All in all guys, I'm really impressed with this 2022 Compass uh, Trailhawk. It's definitely the most aggressive design in the segment in my opinion. And this interior has a very, very beautiful refresh. Uh, the high quality materials really carry along throughout. You have the stitched dashboard. It's not gonna be a true leather dashboard, uh, but it's still gonna be stitched. Looks extremely premium. You have a stitched perforated material all throughout underneath your air vents. Uh, very thick steering wheel, not the best 9 to 3. I personally like to drive 9 to 3, uh, but for most of the people that don't like to drive 9 to 3, you really like the steering wheel, super thick, very nice to hold in your hand. It's also a heated steering wheel. Uh, you got lumbar control in the seats, heated seats, very nice cloth inserts. I'm really impressed with this interior overall, and the styling is fantastic. No, it's not the fastest, uh, so if you're looking for the fastest compact SUV, I would not recommend getting you this one. Uh, but if you're looking for the best style, very comfortable ride, great options overall, I would definitely suggest at least checking this one out. And huge thanks to Dayton Andrews, uh, Chrysler Jeep, Dodge Ram, and Fiat for making this review possible here in Clearwater, Florida. These guys have really kind staff and their dealership's very impressive. I would definitely recommend anybody looking for a new car or truck 
um, in the Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area uh, to definitely check these guys out. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, you guys know how grateful I am for all you know the channel is just not possible without the subscribers and I really appreciate all of you guys for your constant support. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific vehicles you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you so much for watching and I hope all you guys have a great day.